So today we're looking at one of these. This happens to be a revolution sensor. They're very often also called vehicle speed sensors. It lives in the transmission, however, they're not inexpensive by any means. This runs close to $150 after tax. Now, if you have a trouble code 720, this is what the sucker looks like. I'll show you exactly where it's located on the transmission. It's only held on by one 10 millimeter bolt, and then it's just easily removed from the transmission. Now, I just want to quickly note, don't get this confused from P0500 vehicle speed sensor. That's a completely different sensor. Let me show you, actually. I have it out of the car right now. This is P0500. This is P0720. Revolution sensor, also called vehicle speed sensor. It's confusing, I know. This is just vehicle speed sensor. This sends information to, the, to your speedometer. This sends information to the automatic transmission computer. So two separate things all together, but you want to make sure you have the right sensor. This is $25, this is $150. Two completely separate things, different places in, on the transmission. If you're not sure exactly which one you need, just do a Google image search. It's the best thing in the world. So if you have a Nissan Maxima, which is what this car is, type in Nissan Maxima Revolution Sensor. You'll see this. Type in Nissan Maxima Vehicle Speed Sensor. You'll see this. So just don't get confused between the two of them. So enough yapping. I'll show you where this is located. I'll show you also how you can test this sensor and get your car back on the road. Now the easiest way to get to the Revolution Sensor is to safely jack up the car, get it on jack stands. We'll pull off, in this case, the driver's side wheel. There's a little plastic shroud that we'll remove and we'll have clear access to the transmission. And here's just a very basic plastic cover that's just held on by a 10 millimeter bolt here. There's a plastic tab right there. And then we'll be able to pull this right off. As a quick overview, just so you have an idea where or what we're looking at, right here is your brake rotor. This is the side or the driver's side of the transmission. This is your safety, neutral safety switch. And if we just keep on looking over, right here is the revolution sensor. As you can see, it's just held on by one 10 millimeter bolt, so we'll remove that, take it out of the transmission, unhook the harness connector, and I'll show you on how you can test this sensor to see if it's working correctly or not. Now there's an O-ring on this sensor, so just keep on twisting and pushing up. And as you can see, the O-ring is right here. So it, it makes a very nice seal. And there you go, there's your sensor. Now this is where the harness connector is for this sensor. All that I did was follow the wire up into the engine bay and right here is where the connection lives. As you can see, I, I've already disconnected it, but this is all that you want to do. Now let's get this to the bench. I'll show you on how you can quickly test to see if this sensor is working correctly or not. So we have the sensor on the bench and before you run out and purchase one of these sensors, you know, with tax they run close to $150. So you can quickly verify if the sensor is working correctly or not. Now to do that, inside the harness connector, you have two prongs. There's one right there and another one right there. Now this is a multimeter. If you don't have any experience with these multimeters, they're very easy to use. You can pick them up from Sears, Home Depot, Lowe's, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts. They all have them. And you can do a range of different tests. In this case, we want the Ohms test. Now ohms is this omega symbol, so we'll just turn it to this, make sure we're on the ohms, which we are. In this case we're on mega ohms, but that most likely will convert. Don't worry about that, I'll explain it once we get the reading. So what we're going to do is take the leads from the multimeter and the black wire, doesn't matter which one you do, but in this case the black wire will touch to the left prong. The red wire will touch to the right prong. And let's see what reading. We should see 500 to 650 ohms if the sensor is working correctly. And that's not a good connection. Hold on. Let me try to do this one more time. Otherwise, I'll have to put this down. There we go. So we have 568 ohms. Right now, I'm on the kilo setting, which is 1,000s. So if I'm on the 1000 setting, 
There you go, 568 ohms. So this sensor is working perfectly fine. Now, if you do have a trouble code for 720 and you test the sensor, then you probably have a frayed wire somewhere. The harness connector isn't making a good connection. The other thing is regarding the, uh, the testing parameters, you can just do very quickly, do a Google image search. A lot of times you can dig up the parameters. For this vehicle, it's 500 to 650 ohms. Other vehicles may be a little bit different. But if you don't, essentially, if you don't see a reading here whatsoever, then this sensor is bad and it needs to be replaced.